Tonight, I am hosting a very special dinner party. You will meet some movers and shakers in the entrepreneurial and business scene. Take a seat at the table and discover the highlights and struggles of these power players. Bon appétit! Yay! Each one of you have an incredible story. Each one of you have something so beautiful to share. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like the hardest point, anytime public speaking or anything, you can tell everything what you know, but you can't actually say what you like do. So Joe, I think you would be a really good person to start because mm -hmm. you're the umbrella. Mm -hmm, you're like right. you see mm -hmm. so much. I do. So where I, where I start off is, is being like really, really frustrated. Frustrated mm. and um, pissed off and kind of angry with the way our systems have been so truncated into these like places where you over there, the for profit corporate, rah, 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 Silos, I'm gonna yeah. take you down, is for where I am. And then we have the government sector, and then we have all these sectors all over the place with all these really difficult problems out there. And I started to get really frustrated with how they, they weren't. They didn't, they, they, we, didn't, we didn't have enough flow in between them all. Right. And so I wanted to disturb that so that we could really put these great opportunities to work to solve some of our social and environmental challenges. And so in Canada, myself and my team were part of bringing that conversation uh, around social finance, impact investing, social entrepreneurship, and really trying to change the mindset for how business and government and community actually create new pathways for putting people in plant first. So that's that was I my like moment. That. And I like it. And it's fun. And so what I get excited about is hearing about your ideas and finding ways to get you connected to unusual suspects of people who might an investor that might say, I've got something yeah. that I want to do with my investment and I'm gonna invest it in you. And unless, they, unless you make those connections, yeah. entrepreneurial solutions won't get through to a change our systems. And that is yeah. the biggest in issue in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. for the mid-side companies that yep. can't fund money, right? Yep. Oh yeah, and it's the the absolutely. Early, early money. Investors want fantasy. They want to pretend that, you mm -hmm. know, if, if you're new and you have this great idea, they want to know you're gonna have a hockey stick. Right? And right, they know yeah. there's only one in 10 that's gonna yeah. have a hockey stick, yeah. but that's okay, because it's a fantasy. Yeah. But the mid-size or the you know, later stage companies, those are the challenge in, can in Canada, bluntly, to find that kind of right. financing, right. because all of a sudden you have this history, and they're like, yeah, well, yeah, I see your history, right? So for you to do that, Joe, I think it's great. Yeah. Do you find the entrepreneurs, or do they come to you? A bit of both, like I get to work at a place called the Center for Social Innovation. So we have, in Toronto, we have 3,000 members. Mm -hmm. Many of them are social entrepreneurs. I think of any group of people, entrepreneurs definitely help each other more than yes. any other group of people. They're they, willing they, to jump yes, in and help. I think yeah. you guys in the younger generation yeah. can honestly say that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Oh yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I find with, the, with you guys that are coming up as young entrepreneurs is that there's so much more support for you, even at the yes. university oh level. Oh my goodness. At Compared to when we started, oh, yeah. oh my goodness. At all these government agency, you know, like yeah. there's so much more, and even the incubation. Like yeah, all these, incubators yeah, didn't all exist. Yeah, incubators that you guys Accelerators. have, and it's great. And it's I, fabulous. I'm yeah. so envious. It's like, yeah. you know, 22 years ago when I started my basement, it's like, yeah, okay, you're on your own. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, there, was, there weren't you know, angel no, networks, there, there nothing, weren't investors. Nothing. You, you, you had to bootstrap no. everything. No, you go to your yeah. bank and yeah. you try to convince yeah. them that you need $3,000 to buy a computer. Yeah. Yeah. 3000 for a computer. It's, said. They're it's expecting very like standardized. This, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're expecting to see a certain market validation and, and, and market traction yeah. that people can't even get to there. They've got great ideas, but, yeah. but they can't get there because they can't even they can't even get started. But the expectation is that there's more that polish on it, right? Oh yeah. So after I graduated from college, I took marketing at St. Lawrence College. I met a, um, uh, two co-founders that had started a company that uh, sold cologne. And so the idea with them was they wanted to put small batch, artisan, perfumers on the map. So we had a couple options were to get more perfumers from around the world. And the second option was to make the fragrances in house. So we opened, we started a lab. Because we were a small company, we could be really agile. We could use the data to our advantage. Large companies like the designer store brands 
have is that they can't get data quickly enough. So when I was working for Centrunk, the one thing that we could do is we could get data really quickly, right? Where we could use the subscription box model in getting uh, people's preferences um, in almost real time, right? We had, you know, we incorporated things like um, Sent preference, uh, a scent preference test where you know it was like a survey. How do you like these fragrances? How does it wear on your skin? What do you like? What do you don't like about it? And so people would choose those things because they wanted yeah. to customize yeah. the box yeah. that they were getting themselves. Yeah. So as much as we wanted this whole really great brand that had a really good message, we were you know we were all about high quality fragrances, personalized, um, being part of the process in designing the fragrance. We also were collecting all this data, right? And so that proved that that kind of gave us the you know, the, the valuation. And, and so most recently we were acquired. So what's, what's interesting with that journey is that, you know, we grew this company. The, the, the exit strategy was always to be acquired, right? Mm -hmm. That was always the end. You know, that was part of the, yeah. you know, get as much data as possible, you know, create a great brand, create a great subscriber base, and then eventually sell to, to you know, to move on to greater things. Uh, so I have all those skill sets and in, in, so now I want to kind of apply it to other small businesses that are more not necessarily brick and mortar, but are more lifestyle businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what can I use as working in a tech startup, and how, how can I use that to, you know, grow their 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 business? So I'm kind of working as a consultant, I guess. Do entrepreneurs, when they're starting out, like, or at some point, do you design the company to be acquired, at, and then do you, do do you actually make a conscious decision to go like, okay, I want to design my company to be acquired, so I'm going to make these decisions. Sure. Or I'm going to design my company because I'm going to own it and, and this is my next 25, 40 years and I'm going to find a, mm -hmm. someone to take it on in time. But do, are those different types of decisions? They are. And I yeah. know from the people that I've been advising, yeah, it's, it is all about their own personal goals. So, so everybody has a different decision. Some want lifestyle businesses. Some want um, business that just gives them... You a know, job. a yeah, job you, you that they make, make yeah. decisions, they make well, decisions on, on route because you're setting yeah. up your business model yeah. early on to the say what do you, where do you like, want it to be, like, and it's... and then and then they're they're moving towards that. Now, when I started my first business, though, I did not have any idea what what was going well, to happen. What was your happen. first business? A home health care company. I was just starting a business that mm -hmm. I didn't ever want to work again was the primary goal. Never work for somebody else and that was yeah. the, the motivating factor and then as it took off then then you start to go okay hang on there, I need a strategy around where am I going and what's the purpose and 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 where am I exiting and and how to get ready for that exit um, took a couple of years. Are you an entrepreneur that's created a business to make a living? Right. Are you an entrepreneur that's creating a business that is a separate identity from you as yeah. a person, right? right? And right. I think the decisions to to sell or not sell isn't always kind of the end goal, right? The the, the yeah. it's I think the e myth theory is much more applicable to entrepreneur in general. So if you're make if you're an entrepreneur that start a business to make a living, you're not looking to grow. You're not looking to have this ambitious dream to, you know, lifestyle, do right. right? It's just a lifestyle. I'm gonna be a chef, and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a little bakery. Yeah. It's gonna I'm gonna have this wonderful me. lifestyle. And yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do what I enjoy. Or I want to yeah. build a international corporation. Blah blah. Right. So you know, when we start out and through the years, we never really thought about what we're gonna sell, we're gonna stay. None of that matters to us. I mean, my my partners are all engineers, and their message to me was, I love what I do. If you let me play for the rest of my life as an right. engineer, that's awesome. But in the process, you make us rich, that's even better. Money is one thing. Like if we were all in it for money, well, <laughs> none of you would be sitting here. What is your passion? Yeah. Right? If your passion is golfing and you can do a work with somebody else and golf every day, do Good that. For you. Don't risk right. everything and you have, have to try and to finish. start a business because Correct. You know, how many, what percentage failed? Probably about 50, 60, 70%, depending on what phase of the life cycle of a company. You need to understand what your vision is. Yeah. And someone like Lindsay, she's someone that can take the abstract, take the philosophies, take the concepts, takes the like, the visions of like all these dreams and simplifies it in a way that the world can digest it. This is silly, but it literally came from, I have a younger sister, she's two years younger than me. And when we were kids, she wasn't the greatest communicator. So her speech wasn't great when she was really young. And she would 
be spewing off stuff <laughs> right. and no one would understand what she was talking about. And I would right. literally be standing next to her right. and translating exactly what she for said else. for everyone else. And so I got into um, advertising and sales. Had I not done that, I actually wouldn't have had the business side that is now really helping me right. mm -hmm. in my own business. So it helps you. Cool. It, like yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Like Jeez. looking back now to see, like to have that fusion, because yep. you know, as, I like that word, as a fusion. No, that's, it that's is. an it's important a, yeah. question because yeah. a lot yes. of people ask, like, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to do something in this direction, but should I, I go and get those skills? I don't know. And I'm like, you know, you're young, right? Right especially the students, like you're young, go get what you need. Be hungry, be hungry, take yeah. it in, be curious, own it, earn and it, learn. and then and apply learn it. from someone yes. that is Find doing it. And this is what, yes. like, Claire and I have had these conversations time and time again, and I couldn't even imagine, like, I couldn't even imagine coming out of school and starting my own business. Yeah. I would yeah. not be where I am today if I needed yeah. to work alongside someone that was experienced and that helped me tenfold in like honing in on those details, yeah. understanding that skill set, and then being able to apply that to what I'm doing. I, I think it's very difficult to do on your own. But if you want to grow in a corporation that's separate from you as an entity, you actually do. I think that partnerships is so critical because, I agree. you know, yes. whether it's with your managers or with your partners, the key is to identify people that have, that complement you in the sense that, A, you both have to be confident enough to say, look, that's my weakness, that's your strength, right? And be able to admit that to each other, say, I'm not good here, but you are, so yes. why don't you do that? It's time for dessert. Conversations heat up, Things get hot in the kitchen in part two of the dinner party.